see you. I can see you. I don't have the. I don't Do have you the see the chat? No. Nope. You know, I, I got to open the YouTube page. Yeah. Yeah. I gave I gave you a link. There's a pop out chat that you can go from the from the. Yeah. No, I've got no idea. Okay. Don't. What did, was it? The link in Slack. I know. It's, I can give you a link in Slack. Yeah. Here. Yeah. I'll yeah. I don't know where Slack. you gave me the link. That's all right. There. Okay. Click that link. Cool. Okay. Hey everyone, today I'm joined by Chad Weber, Dr. Chad Weber. No, I, <laughs> um, Chad is of course my, uh, the editor and of uh, the sort of other half of this whole show, but he's always behind the scenes. You never really get a chance to meet him. And so I thought we would uh, spend an, an hour and just chat production on how we do the guide to space, uh, how we work together, answer any questions that you might have about audio, video, um, and you know if you want to know <laughs> our background, how we met, any of that. Um, so if this is going to be, uh, I'm sure I'll answer some questions about space and astronomy if uh, if things start to stall or Chad stops talking, which is impossible. I just warn you that right now. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you so if that's not your bag, this might not be the episode for you. But we are going to get nitty gritty into the way we develop. So it's all behind the scenes of the guide to space with uh, with my good friend Chad Weber. Hey Chad, how's it going? Not too bad. How are you? Good. I I think this is like the first. I think you had like one short little snippet that you put in one episode, one QA episode, where it was like, "Who's Chad?" And then you went. Yeah, hey. yeah, that was a a few episodes ago, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Where did you come from? Like how we met? Yeah, yeah. Where are you? So where do you live? Right now I'm living down in Victoria on Vancouver Island. So for those of you who know, who know where Fraser is, I'm on the same island. Right. So I've got several large, large cities on and I'm in, in, the, in the capital of the province. Yeah. Most people yeah. call it Victoria Island and they're wrong. <laughs> and it bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Victoria is the capital. I am about three hours north. Uh, so how did we meet? Through college, in college. Yeah, computer science stuff, uh, programming, networking, security. Um, so that was all interesting. Um, I don't remember, what class did we do together? What classes? Well, I think we took uh, programming 101 or computer programming or software development 101 with yeah. Dr. Frank Nishak mm -hmm. and um, where we learned to code Java and I yeah. stuck through the program and got my diploma in in computer engineering and you left halfway through. Oh, I did the whole thing. I did computer engineering. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know there was an engineering part. Yeah, yeah. No, software, I, engineering. I the... software engineering, I think is is my is my degree. Oh, okay. I didn't realize they had a degree thing. I was doing the computer science diploma. Yeah. Like, I, I was doing the actual, that was my plan. I hadn't known there was more stuff to do. Yeah, there was like, it was two years. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I did. Okay, I did all right, all right. Yeah. I did three, actually. I spread it out. Okay, right. Yeah, I guess we got yeah. disconnected somehow from uh, from working at the same time. And, yeah. and so, uh, yeah, so we went to university together here on Vancouver Island and then and got along really well and worked mm -hmm. on some projects together in through class and then uh, like ran into each other in the city and and we were working on these videos and you were like oh, I do video <laughs> no you I don't remember how you did it I was uh, I was away at the time and you were saying you needed uh, needed some editing done I yeah. was too far away at that point to actually you wanted to like sit with me and do it at the same time to make sure I understood the flow. Yeah. So I had to, I came back to the country. Yeah. Well, classic Chad is, is you travel around the world. In fact, it's sort of rare to have you back in the country. You've been, it's a bit strange. Yeah. Overseas for years and uh, years and years. Uh, most recently you were in what the Czech Republic. Yeah. I was living work. in Prague for the last, for basically all of 2017, 2018. All yeah. Of 2018. Yeah. And so I just moved back again uh, in January. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so, and so I think your your first project was around the two hundred mark. If oh I, no! Was no. it earlier than that? No, I was I was editing like the the early nineties. Oh, okay, 
I, yeah, could, I, I could probably figure out the first episode that you did. We we just the, the black hole one that we just did was episode three seventy seven. Yeah. And you started with us back in the in the nineties. Okay. In the, it was the nineties, yeah. yeah. Because he tried to get the some people because I came back and he tried to get some people in the states to get them done faster because Jay, who was working with you at the time, yeah, the co the co creator, yeah, the space, he couldn't keep up with the editing. He had his other he had a regular job to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. His own yeah, company. You guys, you guys uh, got some place in the states to try the editing, but the turnaround was was really long. Yeah. So yeah, we I sat on Jay's laptop. I could. <laughs> you're done and it was just like it was fast there were there were uh, six minute no three to four minute long episodes yeah. with like six images up in the top corner so they're just yeah, i could get all through all eight of them in, in a day right was, yeah so so the fast. way we used to do it was i would write all eight episodes that we were going to release for the yeah month. right that's right and then we yeah. would get together you me and jay and then we would shoot all eight episodes in one go. And like then, in a, a two-three hour space. Yeah, in a two-three hour it was yeah. Yeah. Break. And we kept moving places too. Sometimes we'd be in one spot and they go, oh no, let's go into the into the bushes more. Yeah. Well originally we thought that people cared and could tell <laughs> that the backgrounds were changing or whatever. And then after a while we just like, no, nah, we'll just shoot it all in this exact We same gave up spot. when they just assumed it was a green screen the entire time. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. And and so we would, uh, and and so we would shoot all eight episodes, and then we'd come back, and then you, me, and Jay, we would just all huddle around our various computers and just edit out all eight yeah. episodes, and put them all on the server, and then release them two per week over the course of the month, and then Jay would come over again, and then we would make all the episodes, and then right, yeah, because he'd fly over for like the day, yeah, yeah, always oh, day two or something, write the scripts on one day. You got, yeah, you guys would like write all the scripts, wouldn't you? Or I would write the scripts in advance. Well, tr I would try, and then and then Jay would, would show up, funny. and I wouldn't have gotten everything done, and then Jay would get <laughs> mad, and then we would I would catch up everything, and then whenever we were ready, then you yeah. were in town, and then you would actually show up as well, and uh, and then we would shoot, and then you'd stick around for another day or two and, and edit everything together and then we would have everything finished and then we'd all go off to our own regular jobs and then come back together again a month later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a nice system, but it's not maintainable for what for what uh, the extent of it is now. You know, because before we had two episodes a week. Yeah. Three it was just two two three minute episodes a week. Yeah. Yeah. And now we do those weren't even the Q and A's. Those no, just Q and A's didn't exist. Like the space episodes, yeah. yeah. And so then we switched to, you know, the Q, the guided space videos got longer and longer and longer, you know, 13 <laughs> yeah. minutes. I think the most recent one that we did was 17 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. It got 17. I'm like, why am I, why do I feel like I've been sitting at the computer all day? <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, you keep very strange hours anyway, yeah. the best of times. Um, yeah. And then we added the QA as well. And the QA is a little bit more quick turnaround. So, mm. so that part we were able to you know, we want to be able to pull all the questions from the most recent QA and then get, so, so that old system didn't work. And then also we switched to 4k about yeah. uh, two years ago because I got my, my, right. my Lumix. Yeah. Um, uh, AV Scott and Fly is asking, why do you put CGI backgrounds behind Fraser? Ooh. <laughs> How did you get so good at green screens? Like the finest, People in the computer industry, video editing, can't even tell. What like, you do is actually you go outside and you film it on an overcast day with the green screen behind so the light's even. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we go to all these great places and just yeah. drop the green screen behind them. Yeah, we, we, we have me we shoot oh, outside in a, in a sort of a perfect lighting with a green screen. And you also shoot that background. So yeah, the back plate. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's perfect. Yeah. So you've got a perfect. So so like getting all the right reflections and stuff, and all the movement from behind, and then yeah. you composite that original background back onto the uh, image. Yeah. Well, that's no. why we got you to, to get your hair all off yeah. there because it's a lot easier than dealing with all the little yeah. squiggles. Yeah. So if it's a nice smooth shape, it's yeah. easier for the screen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly why. Do you yeah. know how to? use a green screen have you ever used a green screen oh yeah yeah i've used a green screen have you yeah yeah I, i've just messed around with them before but i have nothing for nothing like 
uh, like a music video with students and that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, they're fun, but the, it's, it's, it's pretty tricky. Yeah. I've a lot better. I just didn't, I haven't kept up with the tech. We've never, never had a, we should try. <laughs> I know. I know people keep saying we should do like an April fool's episode or something where we shoot with a right. green screen and then the green screen falls down and we're actually out, you know, I'm actually still outside. But the the but the funny part about that is where the moon landing was shot at. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we shoot outside because it's just the lighting is so much better. It's just so much easier to shoot outside and have all the the light. It, 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 it's if easy you block the light, outside, but but then you get all the the environmental noise and the mosquitoes yes. and the two stroke engines. And, the, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Claire Hill is asking, how long does it take you on average to edit the QA shows compared to the informative videos? Oh, the QA shows are like three hours, like maximum. Yeah. Uh, they get a little bit longer if they're trickier. It requires more editing or, in, or, or more videos to go up to, to cover up spots where Fraser's made a mistake. Uh, but yeah, they're like three hours. The actual episodes are more like eight to 16 hours, depending on the complexity and how generic, it, the more generic the videos are, if it's like something about black holes, I've got tons and tons of media about black holes. And it's all tagged. And so I can like search Event Horizon and just it pulls up a bunch of footage so I can just drop it in. But if it's something like um, the Venera Lander or, or, or some weird, uh, uh, like the first Russian spacecraft that landed on the moon, like Luna. Luna Cod? Not, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luna, which is, yeah, moon, Moonwalker or something. Yeah. Nine, I have like, two images of that so yeah it, it's a lot of a lot of searching and researching and yeah yeah uh, media requests to organizations things like that well that's the thing that that chad is is incredibly careful about is copyright and image permissions and licenses and stuff you know i'm a bit of a cowboy in that respect <laughs> Um, and partly it's because for me as a journalist, I always, all of the images that I deal with, I'm always using them for journalistic purposes. They often come from the press release. And so the, the assumption is you can use it as you're reporting the news that they are trying to get you to use, but you can't necessarily come back after the fact and use their imagery for some different story. Yeah. And, and not, and unless it's like NASA or ESA or ESO, they have pretty good image permissions, but for a lot of other people. ESA is tricky. Yeah. ESA is tricky. But yeah. Um, yeah. ESO is great. Uh, NASA's got tons of stuff. Yeah. Wonderful. And, yeah. And so you, ha and so you are really careful about the image rights and property for every single image and video chunk that we use in, in all the videos that we do. And when, yeah. When it's full screen, 4K, only B-roll for 17 minutes, yeah, it, you you are definitely having to, you know, push all that to the limit. Yeah, yeah. Send out media requests as soon as like the script is written. I'll go and I'll start like messaging organizations and saying, "Hey, look, we're doing a script about. We got the script about this. We need information on your your project uh, in the context of this and this and." Basically, I just say, whatever you can give me, give it to me. Because if I can't use it for this script, if it's unsuitable or whatever, I, we can always use it for something else. And there's been times when organizations have given us so much footage that we actually just do a video specifically on that, that project, that mission, like we did with uh, Ice Cube. Right, yeah. So the Ice Cube yeah. episode, that's a great example, right? So the Ice Cube episode, Chad stumbled into this enormous treasure, <laughs> treasure trove, trove of information. And and then, but but we were doing it to to go with some other episode. I forget what it was exactly, but it was just one quick little snippet. And then, um, and then Chad was like, "I've just got, I got so much material here. Can we do an episode on Ice Cube?" And I was like, "Yeah, no problem." And so we did a whole episode on Ice Cube, and they were really gracious and gave us mountains of information and B roll and all kinds of of footage, and we were able to easily do a whole episode on a topic on a, on a telescope that is pretty fascinating. And yet people didn't, I don't think a lot of people were really that familiar with. Yeah, no, it's a, uh, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. Tons, tons of footage. Yeah. Wonderful. And with the, the recent episode as well, we got real, you know, really lucky with the folks from uh, working on some of the, the telescopes have been really good as well. So it's, uh, it, and it's, and, and you're building this bigger and bigger, 
you know, so it's sort of strategically, are you looking to future proof the footage so that we can use it for other stuff and, you know, down the road? Like you're trying to look, look for like eternal permission? Usually I'll say um, and that we can use for articles and videos. I'll say we're writing a script. Do you have any footage that we can use for articles and videos? Um, and that way it's more, you know, or for future things. Sometimes we'll use them for future things just to let them know. So it's it, it's good in that case. But if it's something like uh, probably like news only stuff or it looks a bit too time sensitive, I'll mark it as such just so I don't use it accidentally in the future. Yeah. Assuming permission has been granted for, for future uses. But yeah, big, huge, like, what is it? I think it's two, three terabytes now just of like media. Yeah. It's well, we bought a... Yeah, eight terabytes? We bought an eight terabyte, two eight, eight terabyte hard drives to to match up our our data so that we both have a copy of all of the material. Mm -hmm. And I filled it up with the raw footage and you didn't weren't able to fit your three terabytes. So we have to kind of edit things together. You'll get to a point where we have a, a duplicate and then they'll be full. Yeah, yeah. I it was taking me it took me like 30, 32 hours to copy just the media from my my portable hard drive onto yours. Yeah. Got to go back into that before the next time I come up to uh, come up to Courtney. Uh, go back through and just make sure uh, we don't have copies of of the of your yeah. footage. And so you have like three terabytes of of four K video just... <laughs> clips from all kinds of stuff, right? The European Southern Observatory, Space Agency, NASA. Yeah, and it's all it's, it's tagged. A... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's. Uh... It's really great. There's tons of uh, observatory stuff that ESO has released. It got like drone footage, uh, stuff like that. So if I need to search for a specific telescope, I can do that. One thing that I should do and haven't started yet, because usually the clips aren't that complicated, is uh, in my editing software, I use uh, Adobe Premiere. I've used tons, but right now it's Adobe Premiere. Um, you can add uh, like uh, little markers. So I could add a marker and say, okay, this is, this is, um, Alma, or this is the VLT or something as well. So I know that this section of the, the video clip is a specific specific telescope. So it avoids me having to scrub through my video footage of UHD or UHD video footage of the yeah, so it's telescopes to actually find which one I'm looking for. Yeah, it would save a bit of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's so, but but like how much time would you say all of this now has saved you? Like, oh, tagging. Tons, because I'm not having to search, like, for, before there wasn't enough uh, video content to justify it, but as soon as we started doing more full screen images and stuff like that, and I started searching up my own stuff, um, it, it, it saves a hell of a lot of time now, just, just tons, because I can go into my, go into my Windows Explorer and just start searching for tags, and I can search yeah. up as an astronaut, and it's going to bring up all the clips and photos I have, or photos of paintings or whatever. Uh, Animus Channel saying, I think yeah. 4K is overkill and a waste of memory and bandwidth for most applications. So, so oh, yeah. are we idiots yeah. for doing 4K? A uh, bit of feature proofing, but yeah, probably. It, it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, my laptop that I edit on is not 4K. The only, I have one 4K monitor in the house, and that's on my, the big editing computer that uh, I bought two years ago to actually edit the 4K footage. So yeah, it's probably overkill considering that half of the viewers watch them on phones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but I think um, the, yeah. you know the future proofing is part of it. I mean, we the of the the two formats like when we when we got the new camera, mm -hmm. it does sixty frames a second, which was dramatic. People really liked the sixty frames a second over the thirty frames a second. That made a big difference. So if I had to pick one, mm -hmm. I would definitely go with the sixty frames a second and then the 4k the only reason 4k is is to future proof so to, to yeah. so that when 4k when you've got a 4k screen a 4k phone a 4k, you know then our stuff that's three years four years old still looks okay yeah because you look at some some old uh, like 3d animations that yes or nasa has done even eight years ago and they're tiny they're so tiny and they look so much cleaner so much nicer if they'd uh if they re-exported them yeah better better uh, better dimensions. Yeah. But yeah. So 4k is, is probably the way to go now. Just, just, just to future proof it. 
because there's no way we're going to be going back through the old footage and having it export exactly the same way at a higher resolution down the road. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it does cause a lot of overhead for everything. Uh, so when we switched from 1080p at 30 frames a second to 4K at 60, that was eight times the bandwidth. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was crazy. My my poor little, well, it's like an eight-year-old, seven-year-old laptop now. Couldn't keep up. I'm like, no, got to get a big PC. Yeah. Got that. Uh, and then I left traveling again. Yeah, so you, you bought I'm a like, really fancy PC. That yeah, do I left it in your house. Output, <laughs> and then you went traveling. So you left your PC here at my house. Yeah, and then you would network. log in, do the do the edit, do the render, and then it would drop yeah. onto my network. And so you you yeah. would sort of uh, you would sort of PC anywhere into your computer. That was well, my the house. benefit. Yeah, it had the benefit we weren't throwing thirty gig files around the internet. Yes, so that's great. Uh, which we are now. Which we are now. <laughs> for the yeah. Q&As, only really for the Q and A's. Yeah. Which yes. Isn't... Well, not then. I mean, it depends, right? Like with the the recent one that we did on the, on the, planets, that was seventeen minutes. It was a twenty four gigabyte file. You probably had thirty seconds of me on camera, and the yeah, rest was yeah. me behind the scenes. But it was good just in case. Uh, yeah. I couldn't get because I didn't know how it was going to yeah. get together until it, till it finally did. That's one of those things with the episodes. It's usually like, well, this is never going to get done. Uh, it's never. There's not enough footage. There's not enough information about this thing. Um, and a lot of times when I'm like halfway through the episode, that usually hits, especially if it's very, very specific information. Uh, but it, it, it tends to just pull through in the end. Yeah. And, and so, and so you think about it, right? So, yeah. so I'll shoot the video with Carla. It's mm -hmm. a, say for the QAs, they're a 30 gigabyte file. Then I'll upload it to Google drive. Yeah. Um, It'll take, say, five hours or so to upload the whole file. I've got a pretty fast internet connection. I mean, I've got a – it's about 30 megabits up and 600 down. You don't have the 300-300? No, no. That would be nice. <laughs> um, and then yeah, you download it city. yeah, and, and update the – and then you create the video. And then you render the video out and you upload it to um, – yeah, I send the 4K to YouTube and then the yeah. video podcast versions and Instagram yeah. TV yeah. to drive again. Uh, yeah. Bill Sugden is asking, did you enjoy Prague? Oh, yeah. No, Prague was great. I was there for there for a year. I uh, explored a lot. Uh, I actually spent a lot of my time in a little Italian cafe near the center uh, just to get work done and get out of the apartment. So I just go set up, set, set shop in there and spend like six, eight hours a day in this little Italian cafe in the middle of the Czech Republic. Um, but yeah, no, um, it was great. Lots of things to do, tons of stuff. Uh, but that's the part that's so funny. Like you came back here and had a pretty good setup at home, but you can't work from home. I can't, the editing is fine. The editing, I can work from home, the, okay. uh, but, uh, but yeah, the like the, programming that programming. Yeah. Yeah. Programming. I usually have to get out of the house to do. I've been getting better, but, uh, I've had some, I tried like February two years ago to actually get only program in the house. I was going to go to restaurants. Uh, I was going to save money and and only work at home. And then I got no work done that much. Yeah. So it was, it was, yeah, it was a good experiment, but uh, yeah, it was unsuccessful. But like, what's your typical day? Because I think people, like, <laughs> people have to hear this. Um, well, what time do I wake up today? Like noon? Probably afternoon? Yeah. Yeah, usually I'll wake up in the afternoon. Uh, computer for a while. If I'm editing for you, it'll probably be like, three o'clock to like maybe 10 o'clock editing. Uh, I've gotten better at not like doing those, those working until four in the morning. Uh, but yeah, my, my, how many days a week are you staying up that you see say 3 a.m. or 4 a.m.? Oh, three or four, probably three days a week, three days a week. You're up beat past 4 a.m. Oh yeah, probably. Yeah. Like last night, I think I, yeah. Four o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, that, that that used to be more more or less for the programming as well. It was just easier. I've got um, clients in Germany. What's so, that about? Why do you stay up clients, so late? Oh, clients in Germany, easy, right? So you're you're it's trying. Easier to... To, it's easier to talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it just kind of happened that way. So I'll go sit in all night uh, diner down the road, and just program. Um, but, but I can I, definitely remember at ten yeah. at ten p.m. my time. You're in Prague. I know it's it's <laughs> seven in the morning there, and yeah. you're still answering questions and stuff and it's not because yeah. you just got up out of bed 
No, no, that's because I've still been awake. Yeah. It does happen. Yeah. My, my, yeah, that was the same thing in college though, too, I think. Yeah. Where, yeah. yeah. No, those 6 p.m. classes were just not good for me either. <laughs> Why? <It's... laughs> yeah, you keep a very funny schedule. Yeah. Uh, but go ahead. If you guys have any questions uh, about sort of production on, on the show, uh, this is your uh, this is your chance or, or or Chad. And if you want any uh, ideas on making YouTube videos or anything sort of behind the scenes, any technology, um, Avi Scott and Father was asking earlier about your editing software that you use, Premiere, right? Yeah, yeah, I use Premiere. I've used um, I've used Vegas and I've used Final Cut before as well. The reason why I switched to Premiere was because when we started, that's what Jay's computer was using, um, the co-creator of Guide to Space. And so I switched to that because that's how all the templates were made and the, the lower thirds were all done in um, what's After Effects. So there is a specific reason for keeping for that. Now, unfortunately, Premiere has the uh, subscription fee. And as the Canadian dollar does worse against the American, the price of the software goes up. So. Yeah. It, it, it kind of sucks compared to uh, Vegas, where it'd be a one-time fee, and then that would be that would be it. Uh, but it, good software; it's constantly updated. It, it's you know just your regular editing software. They've got rid of the star wipes though recently, so <laughs> you yeah. can't do a star wipe. Can't do a star wipe. I had to build one from scratch. Oh. Client wanted to start. He's like, "And star wipe?" I'm like, "Sure, that's no problem." And then like, there's no star wipe transition, so I had to, I had to build one. But I got to learn how that worked, so that was neat. Um, building up. And Avi Scott and Fly was asking, do you ever do your own animations? 3D animations and stuff. I um, I tried to learn Blender again. I used to do like 3D animation in high school, and so we tried to incorporate that at some point. Uh, but yeah, I, I basically I needed more time to adjust to that again. I yeah, Blender, but I can make it's it. A, I mean, it's a real time sync it's not it's not too bad nasa's got a lot of 3d models and stuff like that so we could potentially uh motion track uh curiosity into the room with you if we wanted to right this blender's got some really good motion tracking set up where it automatically can adjust like for the optics of the camera and you just drop a 3d model that nasa's already built in there uh, set the light and, and and go so that could be a possibility in the future but um Usually we're we're pretty good as far as the uh, the imagery goes from ESO and uh, NASA. So yeah, they've, they've got they've got some really good stuff that we don't necessarily have to build our own things. Um, and so I mean, one of the things that the, one of the things that I really enjoy working with you is how much you catch my mistakes, <laughs> and you know, like notice when I'm making like you'll catch like even. Uh, mental bugs, mental typos, where I'll say something and you're like, D you said this, did you mean that? And I'm like, yeah, I totally meant that. <laughs> I didn't catch the uh, April 2018 thing that you said. Yes, no. yeah. Occasionally a mistake yeah. gets past both of us. Something something slips by. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, which, is, it, that's normal in a yeah. small team. Or I'll see on YouTube where somebody goes, oh, you messed up the end of that cut. I'm like, ah, oh, no. Like every video, I think there's like, like little tiny error that nobody catches until it's up on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. That, and so I think like yeah. maybe 10 times we've made a mistake, caught the mistake, re-uploaded the video. Sometimes the patrons catch it because we'll release the videos a day early to the patrons and they'll catch the mistake. And so we then can release a different video to the wider public, which is great. Thanks, patrons. For being our <laughs> guinea pigs, but other times we'll release the video. You know, we'll get through the patrons and we'll release it to the wider audience, and then someone will catch some mistake, and then we've got this this question, right? Do we just pull the video down? It used to be easier with annotations because you could just put something on the screen, yeah. but now there's literally no way to fix a mistake after it's already happened if we could like substitute the audio one for most of our videos would be fine right yeah. you can't you can just like on youtube you can sub in music and that that's about it so yeah could you yeah. mute you could mute something and replace it with music i don't know yeah it, it, it's there's no good solution for that you just have to re-upload and, and and hope it hasn't yeah. taken off with the old the old link yeah 
If you if we had more time or a bigger team, yeah, what would you want to do? What do you wish that we could do? Or what are some ideas that we've kicked around that you really wish that we could actually implement? Drive up the chime. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, do uh, do do interviews or or uh, integrate. Uh, NASA does a lot of like B-roll interviews and stuff, and so does the ESL, where they interview people who are working on these projects. And if we had a larger team, we could have them scour these these interviews and, and have it so we can incorporate it into ours easily, you know, or do do more documentary style, which would yeah. be great. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the that's the thing that we that's the dream. talked about, right? That's the dream, right? <laughs> yeah. Is that we hop in a car and we take a week and we hit a bunch of scientific instruments and experiments and and NASA centers and and universities and interview a whole bunch of people and try and tell some some interesting stories. And and you're well equipped for that because you're so good working while you travel. Yeah. And yeah. We're mostly okay for gear. Mostly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'd have to do better. I have to, if we're gonna do that again, or if we, yeah, because we did that. We did the uh, Cyrus Rex trip, and we just went to um, yeah. We just went back down to Cape Canal, Cape Canal, Cape Canal, Cape Canal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, we filmed on location a couple of times, but it's not a not not a regular thing at all. But yeah, it's always it's always interesting, and there's so many weird logistic issues that always crop up. Yeah. We did it. We did that one time. Jay and I did that. We went down to Los Angeles and we right yeah. YouTube studios. Yeah, and we went to the YouTube studio and then we in, invited a bunch of people and we interviewed them there. And then we went to Cal, Caltech and and uh, NASA JPL and a couple of other places and got a chance to to do some some interviews and it was great. Um, and then you've seen people have seen some of those embedded in some of the some of the videos over over the years. But it would be great to do yeah. that again. So I think that's something that I would love to to be able to do more of. But it's you know it's just it's time and it's logistics and it's expense. So and we don't really have a great space agency in Canada where we just like go over and hang out. And well, we do. It's just just in the it's east. Not, it's in the east in it? Ottawa. The Canadian Space Agency. They make a lot of arms. Okay. Oh, they make a lot of arms. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just looking at the footage from the uh, from inside the uh, where they had the uh, space shuttle Atlantis, where where you guys were talking about um, uh, you and Paul Paul Matt Sutter were talking about how the only logos on the space shuttle were like NASA and Canada's Maple Leaf. Yeah. From the, from the Canada arm. Yeah. 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 No, it's well positioned there. Um, so go ahead. If everyone's got any questions for for Chad about uh, making our videos, any of the behind the scenes stuff, now's your shot. Now's your chance. And then it's back to uh, next week. If anyone's interested, uh, we're going going to be having uh, George Dvorsky, who is the one of the main science writers for Gizmodo, and um, but he sort of got into the field. His uh, he wrote it. He did an article about how to dismantle mercury and turn it into a Dyson sphere, and I I sort of see that article as, and I'm sure Isaac Arthur would agree. It's sort of one of the influences for a lot of us about sort of someone practically thinking about some of these really cool futuristic things. Week after that is going to be Jeff Notkin. You might know him as as the, from the Meteorite Men. But he has recently been elected the president of the National Space Society of the U.S. So, and he's going to be a, a great, a great interview. So, you definitely want to come and, and check that one out. And if you've got any space questions, uh, definitely hit us up. Uh, so, how did it go with this, this really quick turnaround? Like we on last week, we got the black hole picture. And we, you had said to me, we should probably do something. <laughs> we should prepare for this. <laughs> right. We announced it like a week early. Yeah. Like, we're going to do this. I'm like, let's prepare a script. Yeah, let's prepare a script. Uh, and I said, okay, and then didn't. I woke up at 1130 to like your Slack messages saying, uh, I, like, like six in the queue, one going, I've almost finished the script. I finished the script. Uh, going to film now. Here's the audio. Go, go, go. I'm like, ah! <laughs> yeah. Because the, I mean, the announcement was like and, 6 a.m. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so I was able to turn my video. I wrote my script 
I think it was done by around 11 a.m. or so. And then I was still up at like 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning because I'm like, if I stay up a little bit longer, I'll be able to watch that. <laughs> but you didn't quite make it. But I didn't quite make it. No. Yeah. Uh, Vernaschia wants to know what your favorite to ice cream is. Ooh. Whatever's in my freezer. It's, it's, there's, Chad's favorite food is whatever's in front of whatever, me. whatever's in with whatever's in within easy reach. Yeah, uh, uh, it's like part of a blizzard sitting in there. There you go. Uh, shot, you know? Cosmic lettuce asks, "Is this your full time job? Uh, if not, what do you do when you're not editing videos?" Uh, I'm a video editor and a computer programmer, so it's mostly German office supply websites and things like that, e-commerce. Um, they're both hobbies that turned into work. People started paying me for them. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it kind of worked out. And it was uh, just very lucky that uh, both of them can be done remotely now. So um, if you yeah. were to like look at the amount of time that you spend, I'm like how much of your, your time is spent doing video editing and how much is done spent doing programming? It's probably 50-50 right now. Yeah. Um, some days or some, some months it's, it's a lot more video editing. Um, because you're fairly consistent as far as that goes, but the the programming's maybe sixty hours a month, sometimes more. Yeah, uh, especially for that client. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, those are my those are my jobs. That's what I do. I yeah. sit on the computer, make sure I have an internet connection usually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the. I mean, that's like for the amount of traveling that you have done. That had to be the worst part was it's finding hell. internet. I got a, a, there was one time, middle of the Czech Republic, tiny little village, rented an Airbnb for a week, uh, specifically made sure this place had internet, right? And because I, I needed to, I needed to talk to the, the, the programming clients. We had like a big project to work on. So I sit down and there's like no internet. There's nothing. The guy's like, it's being fixed. It'll be fixed like in a few days. Wasn't fixed, wasn't fixed. I had to like rush out and buy a SIM card in this tiny little town. I had to go to the next town over to get a store to buy a SIM card and tether my phone to my computer and actually get some work done. It was uh, not the uh, not the easiest uh, solution I've had, but it, it worked. And, I mean, there's no way that we could have done what we do right now with the, like, sending 24 gigabyte files back and forth to the Czech Republic no, no. Um, well, that was why it was really good that the, well, for the Czech Republic where I was in Prague, the internet was great. It was, it was, I'm pretty sure it was unlimited. It was the best stuff you can get in Prague. It was right downtown. So it was, the files wouldn't have been too bad to throw across, but it was just simpler to send the finished project, premier project file back to the PC at, at home and have it do it there. And that way all the files were on your, your network. Yeah. Nicer. Um, yeah. Cause you'd send me, uh, uh, converted or I'd make them, I think in the end, I log onto my computer, uh, my PC in your house, grab the files from the network drive, convert them down to something that could easily be thrown on the internet and my laptop could handle and then send the project file back to, back to my PC in your house. So it worked really well. <laughs> uh, someone asked what country, I don't know. I'm looking at the analytics. I can't see where people are coming from, but I'm sure I could figure oh, it out. Oh, it's mostly this, or for the YouTube videos? Yeah, it's mostly from the mostly United the States. States but, yeah. but not like not like a tremendous amount. Like maybe half-ish is from the U.S. And is then... Chad like the, per sorry, does Chad like the personal greetings messages from presenters? Oh, for like weekly space hangout and... and no, astronomy. just for like the, gu the guide to space or overall. The guide to space, like yeah. the personal greeting. Maybe watch time will tell me. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Uh, the U.S. is 41%. Great, great, good The U.K. is 9.2%. Canada is 6.5%. Australia is 46 India, 3.2%. Germany, 31 And goes down from there. Um... Yes. So Janelle's, Janelle Duncan's asking, does Chad like the personal greetings message from presenters? So I'm wondering if that's the, is that the Weekly Space Hangout? Well, it was back when we were doing like the Weekly Space Hangout when we were doing Astronomy Cast because you used to edit yeah. Astronomy Cast and and we would all say hello to you. Yeah, no, that was great. Or I liked... apologize. I was I was also gone out of the country too, so it was really nice to, to hear people say hi. <laughs> In English. In English, exactly. Yeah, it was pretty hard. Yeah. Um, 
or when they'd apologize when they made a mistake and I had to cut it out. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. That was <laughs> Sorry, Chad. Yeah, exactly. We'd either apologize. Yeah. Yeah, so that was a nice that was nice to hear. <laughs> yeah. Um do you how into space were you before you started to do this work with me? Not not much at all. Like I I, I I've learned tons. I think I didn't even know the shuttle program was cancelled. I had no idea. <laughs> it's just like what? Yeah. So yeah, so uh tons of stuff. Uh, uh, I hadn't heard of SpaceX, I don't think, until until we started started doing stuff. Um yeah, so it was a it was a real eye opener. So now I know like a lot of different missions, a lot more of the history, but I'm still like, especially when we talk about the old, uh, the older missions. So I'm always learning little bits and pieces. So it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and how, and what about now? Like, wh like when you went and saw the Osiris Rex launch, did that have an impact on you? That was really cool. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was pretty incredible. Uh, just the, the noise and the, the light from that. Uh, and there was one point where I'm filming it, and I'm looking through my camera's my camera's viewfinder as I'm tracking the tracking the rock. I'm like, oh wait, I should look at it with my eyes, you know. Just look at it, and I kind of like like it was it was really bright. <laughs> and and now, do you find yourself like more knowledgeable about space than any oh. of your friends? Oh yeah, no, definitely, definitely, kind of have to be, um, you know, where you just talking about like upcoming missions or, or things like that. We're like, Arr. so it's basically, basically explaining things to space, space missions to people at my knowledge level from before. So yeah. I absorb a lot of the information as I'm, as I'm editing and uh, many gritty details and stuff like that. So there's, and now I have a lot of useless information about canceled space missions as well. Or yes. different so yeah, hard drive full of them, brain full of them. Um, Andy Cowley wants to know, what do you like better for editing, Intel or AMD? Oh, I've got an Intel on the laptop. I think the, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Uh, the, the CUDA chips, I don't think for the, for the GeForce cards, I don't think they actually do much of anything for the video files that we're actually exporting. Um, my laptop, I got on the basis of that and then found out the Premiere doesn't even, doesn't even utilize them really. So it's just, ah. Eh. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. I'm agnostic at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think um, we we just priced out a machine and it looks like right now, it looks like Intel has stumbled a little bit on their higher end machines on the i9s. Okay. And so um, we went with an AMD chip over a, for Carla, for my wife's new machine. And, nice. and but I mean, she mainly does Photoshop, right? And some video editing in Premiere. Yeah. to get images of bees and stuff, to make videos of bees. Um, oh, cool. So, uh, but yeah, so like right now, I don't think it really matters. Cosmic Lettuce wants to know, how are the skies where you live? Is it clear? Is it dark? Oh, right now it's it's overcast. In general. It, oh, oh no, I'm in Victoria. So no, the, the, skies, are, the skies are awful. It's just light pollution everywhere. Um, up more towards Fraser, up, up a bit north of where he is. Up in Merville is actually really good. We're down, down a bit further south of the city as well. You can see the Milky Way very clearly. But, Lots of but we did an episode where yeah. we, we were doing something on the Northern Lights, on the on Auroras. Oh, yeah. That, That's, and, that, yeah. And you we actually do an episode of that? We did an episode. I forget how, how we got obsessed about Auroras. <laughs> but, but I got an alert that Aurora was happening, and then you went and actually right. shot it. Right, because you're like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, I, I downloaded that app because you were talking about this, so I downloaded it and, and it gave me an alert, and I ran out to the ran out to the ocean to go film um, someone in dark skies, and so I kind of got like the green little stuff going across. You couldn't really see it with your eyes unless you knew what you're looking at. Uh, I've seen it on the island before, like a great great white billowing sheet, but they're very unusual. This yeah. First but yeah, I filmed that, and you're like, oh man, I'm so jealous, and then like. Three weeks later, you got that huge, yeah. huge thing going across the sky. I'm like, damn it, Fraser. <laughs> yeah, so so I got the alert, told Chad, oh, there's going to be auroras um, this week, this weekend. And so you went out and, and shot it and got this hint of a glow. And then you sent, yeah. you sent the pictures to me. And I'm like, oh, Chad, like <laughs> I could have done that. 
Um, yeah. But we didn't know. Yeah. And so and so Carla and I went out on the next one, and we got kind of the same thing that you did. And so we this was huge though. No, no. We and then and then that was later. Oh. And then we got another alert, and we went out, and it started out like that. It was just like auroras off on the horizon, and then yeah. suddenly. Boom! Just huge northern lights. That was just like this shimmering sheet that went across the entire sky, went almost up to the zenith. It was really bright. I was capturing it on my phone, like just in raw video. <laughs> what? You could that was see. just on your phone. Just, well, I did both, but yeah, you could just see it on my phone. I was just getting raw video on my phone of the of the northern lights changing, and it was uh, it was just amazing. And so the the lesson that I really learned is that you have to be in it you have to be in it to win it right that you that when your aurora alert goes off you've got to have a plan and then you go to where you're going to see it and then you set up your camera gear and then you just wait and it might suck right now <laughs> but it's gonna get good and, to make sure your batteries are charged yeah yeah because yeah, when i hot left, chocolate I like, and you're ready yeah, yeah make sure you're packed and good and everything yeah because especially that your batteries will will die pretty fast but yeah. Yeah, and it was it was once in a lifetime, like just, or probably not once in a you lifetime. Haven't, you haven't been up north though, have you? No. And so you, I mean, you lived up in Northwest Territories. Yeah, for for a bit over a year. Yeah, in the winter, those got those got wild. Yeah. Like little needles poking down and stuff. It was it was great. So you've seen your share of auroras. Oh yeah. 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 I've seen them a couple times here, but they're we're so far south. It's it's highly unusual. You have to wait till it hits like five or six. Yeah. Like, KP index or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Or they'll get really good. Uh, but then how cold is it outside? Like how long can you stand outside looking up into the sky? Oh, it's there in the winter? No. <laughs> you just don't do it. Yeah. It's like minus 30. I think the coldest I've been in, that I knew what the temperature was, was minus 38 degrees Celsius. Like, so in minus 40. Yeah. It's out of your Celsius for Fahrenheit. It yeah. was minus 40. That's too cold for people. Yeah. It's, yeah. I've, yeah. Never, I've been back once. <laughs> I've been back once since. In the wintertime or in the summertime? No, I've never been back in the winter. Yeah. For once was enough. It was, it was, snow was too high. It was, it was no, no, there's no way. Uh, someone's asking what app. I, I, I roam on which app that I like. Right now, the app is called, I think, Northern Lights, but it's not great. And so it gives you a map. Right, so here it is. It's got some ads. So right now, Courtney, the viewing probability is zero percent. Um, <laughs> but you can see the sort of right now. That's where the auroras are, which is actually Iceland. So if you're in Iceland, you would stand a good shot of seeing the auroras. And every now and then, it'll get more and more extreme, and the and that that the area, the field where the auroras are actually starting to hit, will come down south finally to the point that we stand a shot at seeing them. And then you just need to find a place that gives you a view to the north. Or south if you're on the southern hemisphere. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Find a view to the south. And yeah. you will have to calculate wherever you live. But even if you're even as far, like in the middle of the United States, like if you're northern California and above, if you're New York City and above, you know, think of a line across the U.S., you should be able to, about once a year or so, be able to see auroras. You just have to keep an eye on when the aurora activity is happening and when you get the alert, go out, set up your camera, look to the north, somewhere that's dark skies, and so you want to figure that out. Um, so then people are talking about the ice truckers. So that all happen, <coughs> happens there, right? Oh yeah, no, there's no road. The uh, town I was, or the little, I guess it was a village. There's only like 600 people in there and that was seasonal. Uh, it was an oil town called Norman Wells. My brother's still up there. Uh, yeah, there was only, uh, the only roads in or out was was in the winter when the river froze and people drove on the river. That was that was how people got around. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's this, this, on the shoulder seasons between the ice freezing thick enough and the ice breaking up and clearing enough that uh, there's no transport other than an airplane and then they can take boats on the river in the summer but yeah but that sort of in between time when it's all there's nothing you do if you wanted to get a car out you couldn't yeah <laughs> there was no way uh evie scott and flowers asking would we accept animated material collaborations for our videos like isaac does like isaac arthur does 
I wouldn't see why not. Yeah, I I mean we don't know how. <laughs> so I think the like I would love to incorporate animation from other people, but I don't know how to approach it. Um do you like pay people to just be animators? I mean, that's sort of part of the thing that I'm that's really important to me is just sort of to pay everybody on my team. And, you know, Chad sends me an invoice every month and I pay him and all my writers send me an invoice every month. So I feel really weird about people doing work volunteer. But I also know that animation is incredibly expensive to get it to get it done for depending on how much material that you use, which is why we sort of we use as much material from NASA and those folks as possible. So I we just have never figured out how to incorporate animation into our process. We've done it a couple of times, so that was custom made stuff by people we were already collaborating with. Uh, I seem to remember like a kind of like a mushroom house on the moon. Ye remember who made that though? Yeah, I think Isaac made that. Uh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we've had a couple of uh, graphics designed. Uh, the Jupiter harvesting machine in the moon, right? That was Sergio Botero, who I think is watching yeah. right now. Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So sometimes we'll get custom things like that. Yeah. Really yeah. Nice. And so like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know how, like if you could just hire an animator full time and then just have them add material to what you're doing, that would be great. Mm -hmm. um, but that would be more than our entire budget for a year. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to do that for a month. Yeah. So yeah. it's a like you know it's sort of you grow and try to fit things in that you can actually afford and then judicious use and it's I think you know you see what happens on a cosmos etc and they're creating a lot of stuff from scratch it's amazing but they're spending 5 million dollars an episode they've got, they've got yeah right that's like game of thrones money yeah it's game of thrones money right you know Neil deGrasse Tyson I mean like think about our budget right it's it's say maybe if every episode of ours is say five hours of my time to write and do post production and say ten to twenty hours of your time yeah. to do the editing. And that's that's our whole budget. Yeah, so, exactly. And then <laughs> we move on. That covers our costs. We do the that's best right. job that we can. <laughs> yeah. I mean re like ad revenue on YouTube is about a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. And so the rest of the money is, um, is Patreon and Patreon yeah. money definitely covers the cost of, of Chad and some of the other team, but that's about it. You know, I all, whatever money comes in, I just give it back to, to the team. <laughs> it goes back into the machine. Into the machine. Yeah. I, but the thing is like, I've been doing this for 20 years, right? So my goal is to, is really just have fun and be able to do this work and do it for my life and not try to grow some gigantic media empire. I want to employ a bunch of people who I like working with. I want to keep doing work that I enjoy. I want to be able to to have interesting conversations and satisfy my curiosity. And that's, you know, that's it. That's all I want. And I'm like a total control freak. Yeah. <laughs> but but I think something that's pretty funny is is like how much oversight do I have on what you do? It's not a ton. Like how uh, much? How how nitpicky of, <laughs> of a of you, a... you have no? I haven't. I don't think I got a nitpick in a very long time. Uh, most of it was involved with like oh that song again or something. Once we started adding music again, and yeah, music back. Uh, yeah, there's there's not a lot. It's mostly like oh that's great, and then we just do that. Yeah, yeah. It's just down there, yeah. I'd say so, like most episodes, you're like okay, I just did did the. I mean, this is why it goes so quickly. Is yeah. Chad, I write the script, I record the audio, you know, or the video, Chad does the edit. And then I look at it and go, there are no mistakes. <laughs> there. This goes on the internet now. Yeah, yeah it is time for the internet. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, there's not a lot of basket back and forth and, and, and different iterations of an episode. It's just like, well, that works. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, you know, I mean, people are, Ch Chad finally broke Fraser's nitpicking. I'm, I am so not detail oriented. I like, broke your what, what again? Oh, someone says that you broke my nitpicking. Like you broke nitpicking. Yeah, no, I am, <laughs> I am so not, um, 
it, my whole team knows this. Like I am, I'm a big picture person. I am not a, <laughs> I'm not a details person. As long as you're slowly working towards your end goal, you're fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, like if something is clearly wrong, then I'll try to catch it. But apart from that, you know, I don't care really <laughs> where, you know, which image and, and all of that and all the details. No, I don't, I, don't, I have no opinion whatsoever. It's like, and in fact, people ask me to edit their work. I'm like, it looks good. Cause I got it. I, I see what you were trying to say. And I, so, yeah, I'm a terrible editor. Um, but it's, you know, makes, makes for a very fast, rapid team. Oh yeah. No, we're pretty, we're pretty streamlined now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's great. I mean, it's, that allows you to get the, for us to turn stuff around more quickly and not have to, um, uh, yeah, have the back and forth. It would just crush it. So well, yeah, we need to we need to turn them around quickly because there is an episode a week, like a normal episode a week. The yeah. uh, and the Q and A, the, the Q and A is like yeah, three hours for editing. And a couple that's hours. The, and that's the part that's yeah, crazy, so right? People are yeah. a lot of people enjoy the Q and A's more. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, but oh, but, we'll, cool. but we're never. Yo, we will never yeah, not be allowed no. to make the regular episodes. Yeah. So uh, that's you know there you go. Nancy Graziano is agreeing. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hi, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm definitely do not nitpick uh, Nancy's uh, decisions. <laughs> like with the weekly space hangout, I will show up. <clears throat> I will show up and find out who my guest is. <laughs> like, who we got today? Okay, great. <laughs> Hello, you. Quickly, who compete. are you? And what do you? When I say like, who are you and what do you do? Is my opening question. <laughs> It's because I literally really? have no idea. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. 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 No, I try to prep. I try I try to do a little more prep. It depends, you know. But you got, you got like, like every, every, every day of the work week, you've got something going on. So it's, it, it's going to be at some point, it's going to be impractical to keep up with absolutely everything. Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm going as, yeah. full, full speed all the time. <laughs> can't stop. Won't stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can't stop. Don't stop. Won't stop. Um, uh, so where can people find out what you work on? Oh, I've got no web presence. Yeah, like, it's funny. You, I do, uh, I do a search. You should actually work on that because have you done a search for Chad Weber? Uh, probably Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer pops up. Is yeah? it? I think there's like oh, some criminal. Sure like if I do a search for there's Chad. some criminal. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Please issue warning that 19-year-old. Here you go. In yeah, Chilliwack. Okay. Alleged, alleged gangster Chad Weber. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In Chilliwack and Abbotsford, that's like, that's wow. like close. Okay, yeah, I'm just scrolling down. Legend Abbots Abbotsford gangster, Abbotsford police issue public warning about Chad Weber. Yeah, Stay from Chad Weber, uh, Abbotsford police arrest Chad Weber. Okay, well, yeah, I. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, maybe we should work on your web presence a little bit. So that you've got like, you know, so that when someone searches, because there's a Chad Weber in Abbotsford or Chilliwack, like yeah. those are, those are suburbs of, of the, of Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you say you're Chad Weber from, you know, Western Canada, Island, yeah. there's another one. It is, it's a very common last name too. It's yeah. not, it's not, yeah. <laughs> oh no. I was thinking of Chad Smith, the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, street. there you go. That's what it was. Got it. Yeah, so you have no web presence. No uh, web presence. But if people uh, want to send you an email, yeah, Weber, it, it, we put your email address into every video yeah. that we do, so people can always find yeah. that. That only put a small uptick in all my spam. But... <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Post, just, your, just post your email address on the internet. Yeah, <laughs> What's the worst that could happen. <laughs> Google catches most of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Chad, I just want to say, uh, yeah, Sergio's saying that you should put a portfolio online, um, yeah. but. You know, for from me and to all of the people who watch what we do every week, we you know, this would not be the same without you. You do a wonderful, fantastic job. It's an absolute pleasure working with you uh, every week. You're like, it's just like at this point, it's just like butter. It's so smooth for us to work together. It goes so quick. Uh, I really enjoy uh, having you be part of this team, and uh, I literally could not do this without you. So. Uh, thank you for oh. everything, man. Well, thank you. It's been wonderful.
learning so much and get to get to work on like different things every day. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. I know this is totally different. Don't worry. Next week uh, we're back to <laughs> space uh, journalists. <laughs> Um, but, uh, thanks to all the people watching. Thanks to the moderators, uh, and Nightbot for keeping us <laughs> safe. Uh, we'll see you all, uh, next week. Thanks everyone.